Hi everyone and welcome to Grammar episode 19. Today we're going to continue our discussion on pronouns and we're going to talk about relative pronouns. Who, whom, which, that, whose, where and when. There are also of course question words as well that can go at the beginning of a question formula. But let's see how we're supposed to use um, relative pronouns. Let's have a look. Now first of all, if you want to remember some of the old videos on pronouns, you can look at Grammar 6 and Grammar 18. Here where I talked about uh, subject, object and possessive pronouns, and here where I talked about reflexive pronouns, because they're all connected in a way, okay? So it's worth re-watching those videos just to remember. And now let's talk about relative pronouns. Now when should I use a relative pronoun? These words that I've just shown you before. Now they're used as conjunctions. If you remember the word conjunctions from another video, it means linking words, joining words that connect two sentences to make one. And they replace the noun of the first sentence. So here you will see some nice examples where I replace the word he with the word who. All right, so have a look at this example, pause the video if you want, or you can use one of these relative pronouns to start a question. And you see I put it right at the beginning of my question formula. So if you remember all your grammar tenses, you can just put one of these right at the beginning of the question formula. Who, what, where, etc. Now, let's look at each one individually. The word who refers only to people, only to humans, not to animals. Which refers to things and can refer to animals as well. Now, the word that is perhaps very important because it could be used to replace who and which when we talk about people and things. Now that can replace who and which only in two situations. One, if you're speaking in an informal way, so spoken English is quite informal, so you can't really use that if you're writing a business email or something professional. It's not the best way to go about it, okay? Or when there's no comma in front of a relative pronoun. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by this. Now here, you're going to see, if you pause the video to have a look at the sentence, that I have a comma, and then I have to use the word who, I can't use the word that. Here as well, you'll see I have a comma, and I use the word which, I can't use the word that. So pause the video and just look at these two sentences very carefully and see why I can't use the word that. The reason is, I have a comma before. So this is more important when you're writing, okay? An email, um, a homework assignment if you're a student, okay? But look at these two sentences. I don't have a comma before the relative pronoun, so I'm allowed to put the word that. So pause the video and look at these two sentences very carefully, because you'll see where I've used the word that, I have no comma. So this is very important for written English. When you're speaking, nobody knows if you've got a comma or not unless you pause. But in writing, they would know. So emails, essays at school, this is important. Now, let's look at the other relative pronouns. Whose refers to possession, something belongs to someone. For example, whose pen is this? Or if I say, Marina, whose mother is a teacher, speaks English very well. So the mother belongs to Marina, so whose mother is a teacher? Where refers to a place, a location. When refers to a time. Let's look at everything in more detail. Now here you'll see I have some examples for you for each of those relative pronouns. Here you will see I put either the word who or that because I refer to people. You see, it refers to a person. Here I used which or that because I refer to a thing, the hat. You see, it's not a person, it's a thing. And here it was a boy, so it was a person. So I used who. Now here, I want to draw your attention here again, once again. Whose refers to possession, something belongs to someone. So again, Marina, whose mother is a teacher. So the mother belongs to Marina, okay? Speaks English or knows English very well. So when you talk about something that belongs to someone or someone who belongs to someone like a family member, you need to use the word whose. And here I said when you returned the book. 
When refers to the time you returned it. Maybe you returned it yesterday or two days ago or five minutes ago. And here I refer to a restaurant where I met my best friend. So here I refer to a place when I use the word there. So these are all very good examples that I want you to pause the video and look at them individually and read them carefully to see how I'm using these relative pronouns and what they mean when I use them. Okay, whether I'm talking about who for people, which for things, who's for belonging, when for time, and where for place. So pause the video and read the examples. Now let's look at one more thing. Who and whom. They both refer to people, but there's a small difference. When I combine two sentences and I want to use the word who, really I should be talking about the subject of the sentence. And in the previous video, uh, with reflexive pronouns, I talked about the subject and the object of a sentence, so you can go back to that video and have a look, okay? It's exactly the previous video from this one. Now, if I have a subject pronoun like he, she, it, etc., and I want to combine two sentences like I did here, you see I wrote he, then I'm allowed to use the word who. So pause the video and have a look at this example, because I said, you know, that's a boy, he kicked the dog. That's the boy who kicked the dog, because I'm replacing the word he with the word who, and he is a subject pronoun, so there it is. I talked about that in my other grammar episode, okay? So you should really watch that again to remember what a subject pronoun is and what's going to follow now, object pronoun. So that's when I have to use the word who when I refer to people. Let's have a look at whom. Whom is, of course, more formal, and in American English, they don't really use the word whom. It's too formal for the Americans. Um, so just bear in mind that if you're in America, you may not need to use the word whom, because everyone usually uses the word who. It's the easy way out. <laughs> All right, but whom can refer to the object of a sentence or a preposition, okay? But in order to combine two sentences with the word whom, you need to have not a subject pronoun like before, but an object pronoun. Things like him, her, them. So look at these examples here. These are children. We helped them. So how am I going to combine this? These are the children whom we helped. So here I was allowed to use the word whom because I used an object pronoun, not a subject pronoun. Well, practice all of these things and, as always, good luck.